Welcome. We're now going to have a look at eddy currents. I alluded to eddy currents when we're talking about um, transformers and especially non-ideal transformers, that we lose um, energy in a transformer in two ways. Uh, one, because of incomplete flux linkage, and the second was um, the loss of energy through to heating effects by eddy currents as a, mag a varying magnetic field passes through the solid iron core. So let's have a look at why does why do eddy currents create um, heat loss or power loss? So what are eddy currents? Well, eddy currents are induced circular currents that are produced in a flat conductor. So far, we've been looking at um, EMF, which is um, equal to minus N to thy by dt, being induced in either a wire or a loop. Now, we are going to have this changing magnetic field so that's the change in the magnetic field applied. So that's a magnetic field applied to a larger extended um, conductor. Now remember that Faraday's law says that a, um, a flat conductor or any conductor in the presence of a changing magnetic field will have induced within an EMF. And if a circuit is provided, current will flow. Because the um, large conductor itself is extended, then we get circular little swirls of current happening because um, the extended uh, surface of the conductor itself provides area for a, a current to flow. So automatically we have um, a area for current passing th um, through this object. So they are circular currents, as I said, and they're very similar to eddy currents. So let's have a look at what, sorry, similar to eddy currents, to water eddy currents. Now, you might have gone to the beach and had a look at um, little swirls of water that occur as the waves come in and offshore. Um, what happens is small little eddy currents um, form together to make bigger ones, and then these bigger ones even bigger swirls still. So these small little circular motions become larger and larger depending on the area to which they can fill. So the larger the flat conductor, the more extended it is, the larger the current will be. So how do these things happen? So we've got a extended um, flat conductor, so this is like any metal conductor, and I'm going to put through it some magnetic fields. Okay, so it's got to penetrate, and this is B here, and it must be changing. We've got to make sure that it does change. If it doesn't change, then we've got a static field, and therefore we would not have any um, uh, any uh, d phi beta t, and therefore we wouldn't have any EMF. Because remember, E equals minus n d phi beta t. This is the changing flux. Right, so around these lines of flux, we would have very small circular currents forming. Now, please look at those arrows on those currents with a grain of salt at the moment. I'm just trying to show you that they are swirling. The direction we'll go through in a few more moments, they're more, much more complicated than just me randomly putting an arrow on it. So we have these smaller currents, and then because it is an extended current, they could join together, sorry, an extended um, conductor, and eventually we get a very large circular current that can take up the, um, the actual extent of the conductor. So this largest current here, this largest eddy current, will be the com combination of smaller currents and it will, be, um, will try to fill the entire flat conductor as long as we've got enough EMF, sorry, enough um, magnetic field going through it. Right, so let's try and work out the direction of these eddy currents. Now the direction of the eddy currents is slightly complicated, so uh, bear with us. So let's put, give ourselves a flat conductor. So once again, we have a flat conductor here. I'm making a rectangle on its side. I'm gonna put some magnetic field lines through it again. Let's put a in, it must penetrate the surface. 
And we'll have it statically pointing up at the moment. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the, um, we're going to increase the, uh, the strength of the magnetic field in B. So it's going to now um, make the magnetic field slightly larger going up. So these are going to be increasing in strength. Okay, so we've got to change. So what we're going to have is an increase in, if we're looking down on this, so our eyeball is looking down, so there's our eye I'm looking down. What we would see is on the flat conductor, looking directly straight down, we would normally see dots, now we'd see more dots. So this is a gain of dots, okay? So a gain of dots will be uh, countered by Lenz's law with a um, try to reduce the, the number of dots. So this would be the creation of X. So that's what we were remembering from um, doing Lenz's law earlier on, that a gain of dots is um, done with a gain of X. So the, there would be a generation of X in this um, loop. Sorry, not in this, um, in this loop, it's a flat conductor. As a result of a, um, the gain of X, we can now pretend this is a loop. Just use the outside of the conductor here, just assume it is a, um, it is a coil of wire. And if we were to have a gain of a, um, production of X, which way would current have to flow in this conductor? So a gain of X, um, we would have, we're using our right hand grip rule, um, would be X coming in the center and dots outside. So going around there, I'm just using my, my right hand grip rule at the moment. Um, I would need to have a current in this direction for that to happen. Okay, so using your thumb now, um, and you make your thumb point in this direction, it's your right hand rule. If you were to use your thumb, then your, the back of your hand would look like that. Okay, here's your fingernails, okay, no, so not your fingernails, but your knuckles. And it would point into the board in the center and out of the board over here. So try to take a few moments to, have, to try and work out that direction. But looking at that, that means that these four over here, these four um, lines of flux, if they increase in this direction, will generate an eddy current in that direction there. And it is accordance with Lenz's law. We might practice some more of those in a few more moments. Now, the size of the eddy current, as I've alluded to, is, um, is the same size as the actual possible surface. So we, if we need to reduce the eddy currents because sometimes eddy currents, not sometimes, but in the majority of the cases, eddy currents are a problem. Because if we've got a, a large extended um, uh, surface like this, uh, we've got eddy currents swirling in here, that is the production of I, okay? And I, which being current, is a V equals I R. If there's any resistance, we get, um, which there will be, the resistance of this um, actual piece of conductor here, we will have voltage requirement. And that voltage will be voltage loss. And this voltage loss, which is the uh, potential uh, drop, would be heat in the form of heat. So according to Ohm's law, next slide, any currents, like every other current, obey Ohm's law. So if we have current, I, and the surface has resistance, then there is potential drop. That potential drop is somehow converted to uh, other forms of energy, and in this case, it's forming heat. So any currents are the main cause of, uh, cause of heating 
in armatures where coils are wrapped around them, such as transformers or motors. And in this case, it's the transformer we really want to look at. So transformers become less ideal the more they have um, heating up because of eddy currents. So here we have um, a picture of, um, of two ways that we can have the, um, the core of a transformer um, formed to try and minimise the amount of heat loss. Now, there's an accompanying video which me sh um, has me showing you um, quite detail the lamination that I'm about to talk about. So let's just have a look at a transformer firstly. So a transformer has a soft iron core and it has a wrapped around it a primary okay, and a secondary, so it's a primary and a secondary coil. There's a secondary. Okay. It's either a step up or a step down depending upon the ratio of windings. Now, we want to make this, um, this transformer as um, ideal as possible. That means we want to link the flux from this coil, the primary coil, into the second. Okay, so that's flux leakage. And that is done by that soft iron core. That's the purpose of that soft iron core. But this soft iron core is an extended conductor. And therefore, as a result, we would get heating due to eddy currents. So what do we do? How can we minimise this heat? We can't stop it altogether, but we can minimise it. And the way we do is we take this iron core, we cut it up into very thin slices and then stick together, stick them back together. So here we have two ways that it is done. You can see that the, the iron core, this is like a chunk of the iron core here, has been um, sliced very thinly. So this is the iron sheet. And then we stick it together with glue and that glue that is between each of the um, iron, core, uh, sorry, iron sheets is non-insulating. So it's non-conductive, it's insulating. So we have all of these um, very thin slices, and these slices are known as laminates. Okay? Lamina just meaning a slice. And lamination is the process of slicing and then sticking back together, okay? So we've got two ways that we can slice. Here we have horizontal slicing on this one over here. Transformer number one has horizontal slicing and transformer two has vertical slicing. Which of these would be more efficient at reducing the heat loss from eddy currents? Now remember, I said that heat loss from eddy currents, sorry, the size of the eddy currents is going to be the size that the actual eddy current can form. So let's just have a look at this. So I'll just get rid of some, all, all the annotations. Have a look at transformer one. This has a current going in this direction and out this way. So it's got a loop around this here. Now using our right hand grip rule for solenoids, we can work out which direction that um, the magnetic field will go through this loop of wire. Okay, um, so if it goes this way here, then um, we'll just, I'll just randomly put, pick up a, a thing because it's no use me trying to show you um, uh, right hand grip rules. Let's just say that the B is going out that direction. Okay, and around each of these, um, it's actually probably going down, I think. Um, Around each of these wires, uh, sorry, these, these field wires, I'll just remove them just so we don't have any confusion. Um, it doesn't really matter at this point. Around each of these will be swirling, and don't, once again, don't worry about the direction, a small eddy current. And this eddy, these eddy currents will join together to form that size eddy current. So that's the maximum size eddy current. It is the size of the possible block that is going through there. That's the magnetic field is in this direction and the eddy currents swirl around the field lines. So we have a size of that eddy current being this big. Okay? 
Now, looking at transformer number two, the field lines are still going up through the same direction, but this time, let's just even put the four in there, the size of the eddy current possible is only as large as the width of each of these. Okay, because if, that, if that's the direction of the magnetic field, then the eddy current cannot join together to create a big swirling eddy current. So this, the largest um, single eddy current is going to be the circle, the circle that fits in one of these little slices here. As a result, the size of the eddy current in this one is that big and compared to the slight size in transform one being that big. Large, this would be a large I, this would be a very small eddy current I. If we decrease the, um, the current, then we decrease the voltage loss. Remember V equals IR. If I goes down, if I goes down, then also V goes down. We can't change the resistance of the iron core. It's the iron core. It's what we've got to work with. So they also have practical uses. And you will see a, an accompanying video of um, slotted, uh, a slotted um, breaking as well. So uh, please have a look at those two there. There is a, a two accompanying videos that I would like you to watch with this one. But here we have a situation where we use one of the practical um, benefits of um, any current formation and it's magnetic breaking. So if we were to take a magnet and drop it down a copper tube, as the magnet goes down the tube, it would um, create a changing magnetic flux, the thigh bit of T, in the copper wall as it goes down. As a result, it will induce EMF in the surface of the copper tube because the copper tube is an extended conductor. Okay? It's basically flat. It's, um, it's just, it's not a wire. It is an extended conductor, so it considers to be a flat um, conductor. This EMF is because of the thigh bit of T, um, minus M to the thigh bit of T, because we've got a change of flux. And as a result, <clears throat> this EMF induced in the copper tube will be directed in such a way that it will try to oppose the change that is, accord, um, is causing it. So to remind ourselves what Lenz's law says, Lenz's law, Lenz's law is the EMF slash current induced will produce a magnetic field that opposes is the magnetic field or the change. So often it's easier to look at the change. Um, so EMF, the induced EMF will produce a magnetic field that opposes the magnetic field or the change that is causing it. Right, so there is Lenz's law. So what is the change that is causing um, this EMF induction here? What is causing this EMF? And it is the passage of a magnet through this copper tube. As a result, the EMF will be directed in such a way to try and stop the passage of this magnet through. It will create a magnetic field that is directed upward where the south pole is directed up to try and minimise the south pole moving down. Okay, I shouldn't put those arrows there because that arrow makes it, um, looks like it's the, um, the direction of the... Just wipe those out. Okay, so it's going to produce a magnetic field that opposes the south pole going down. Okay, so the south pole, once again, I've got to stop running arrows. So um, the south pole is going this direction and therefore it will produce souths going up. Okay, and in that case, um, the eddy current will be um, 
Let's see if looking from the top, it would be going clockwise in this entire. But anyway, that's not important. Looking at magnet B, magnet B is thinly sliced. It's got holes in it. Um, it's got slots. And as a result, the size of the magnetic field, so the size of the eddy currents, can only be as wide as the, um, the, the individuals um, left, the parts that left between the slots. So the size of the eddy current in, magnet, uh, in situation B is going to be much lower and um, smaller than the one in magnet A. Magnet A one is going to have a massive one compared to magnet B, which is smaller. So the amount of breaking, it's still going to try, and as it goes down, we are still going to get the phi beta t, we are still going to get EMF, and we are still going to have Lenz's law trying to oppose the motion of the magnet going through. But because we will not have as much eddy current, then we will not have as much um, south pole uh, um, force against the south pole as it goes down, and it will basically go through un. Um, um, impeded. If we were just to have a normal tube, let's just make it of plastic, and we did magnet C, it would just fall straight through under the, 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 um, under the effects of gravity there at 9.8 metres per second squared. In this one here, it would be less than 9.8 metres per second, so it's going to be less than 9. Point, no, that's greater than less than 9.8 meters per second squared and this is much this one over here is much less than 9.8 meters per second squared the two videos that accompany this uh, one has this drop through it um, you'll see it very very slowly um, passing through and the other one is a magnetic breaking where I, i'll show you some slots okay the only hard part about eddy currents is trying to work out its direction. And I might try and put a video together to try and help you with um, determining the direction of the eddy current um, because it is more complicated um, trying to explain it without being face to face with you. So could you please watch the three videos that I've got with this? Um, the first one is the lamination so you can see how um, Transformers are laminated in really, really thin slices, so we actually can see a physical transformer. The second will be a YouTube video of a gentleman dropping a, a magnet down through copper tubing. And then the third one will be seeing um, one from our lab <coughs> where we will see the difference between flat conductors and um, slotted conductors. Thank you.